Hi everyone, it's Jennifer, and let's talk about who invented the telescope. Several men laid claim to inventing the telescope, but the credit usually goes to Hans Lippershe, a Dutch lens maker in 1608. The telescope is one of man, humankind's most important inventions, although we're not entirely sure who to give the credit to. The first person to apply for a patent for a telescope was Dutch eyeglass maker Hans Lippershe. In 1608, Lippershey laid claim to a device that could magnify objects three times. His telescope had a concave eyepiece aligned with a convex objective lens. One story goes that he got the idea for his design after observing two children in a shop holding up two lenses that made a distant weather vane appear close. Others claim that the, at the time he stole the design from another eyeglass maker, Zacharias Jensen. Jensen and Lippershe lived in the same town and both worked on making optical instruments. Scholars generally argue, however, that there is no real evidence that Lippershe did not develop his telescope independently. Lippershe therefore gets the credit for the telescope because of the patent application. While Jensen is credited with inventing the compound microscope, both appear to have contributed to the development of both instruments. Adding to the confusion, yet another Dutchman, Jacob um, Midius, applied for the patent for a telescope a few weeks after Lippershe. The government of the Netherlands turned down both applications because of the counterclaims. Also, officials said the device was easy to reproduce, making it difficult to patent. In the end, Medius got a small reward, but the government paid Lippershe a handsome fee to make copies of his telescope. In 1609, Galileo Galilei heard about the Dutch perspective glasses and within days had designed one of his own, without ever seeing one. He made some improvements. His creation could magnify objects 20 times and presented his device to the Venetian Senate. The Senate, in turn, set him up for life as a lecturer at the University of Padua and doubled his salary according to Silman Drake in his book, Galileo at Work, His Scientific Biography. Galileo was the first to point a, text, a telescope skyward, and he was able to make out mountains and craters on the moon, as well as a ribbon of diffuse light arcing across the sky, the Milky Way. He also discovered rings of Saturn, sunspots, and four of Jupiter's moon, moons. Thomas Harriot, a British ethnographer, and mathematician also used a spyglass to observe the moon. Harriet became famous for his travels to the early settlements in Virginia to detail resources there. His August 1609 drawings of the moon predate Galileo's, but were never published. The more Galileo looked and the more he was convinced of the sun-centered um, Copernican model of the planets, Galileo wrote a book Dialogue concerning the two chief world systems, Potomac and Copernican, and dedicated it to the Pope Urban VIII. But his ideas were considered heretical, and Galileo was called to appear before the Inquisition in Rome in 1633. He struck a plea bargain and was sentenced to house arrest, where he continued to work and write until his death in 1642. Elsewhere in Europe, scientists began to improving the telescope. Johannes Kepler studied the optics and designed a telescope with two convex lenses, which made the images appear upside down. Working from Kepler's writings, Isaac Newton reasoned it was better to make a telescope out of mirrors rather than lenses and built a reflecting telescope in 1668. Centuries later, the reflecting telescope would dominate astronomy. The largest reflecting, refracting telescope, the one that uses lenses to gather and focus light, opened at Yerkes Observatory in Williams Bay, Wisconsin in 1897, but the 40-inch, 1-meter glass lens at Yerkes was soon to be made obsolete by larger mirrors. The Hooker 100-inch reflecting telescope opened in 1917 at Mount Wilson Observatory in Pasadena, California. 
It was there that the astronomer Edwin Hubble determined that the Andromeda Nebula was indeed a galaxy far, far away, meaning 2.5 million light years, from the Milky Way. With the development of the radio, scientists could start to study not just light, but other electromagnetic radiation in space. An American engineer named Carl Jansky was the first to detect radio radiation from space in 1931. He found a source of radio interference from the center of the Milky Way. Radio telescopes have since mapped the shape of galaxies in existence of background mi microwave radiation that confirmed a prediction in the Big Bang Theory. Wow. The, um, let's see. The James Webb Telescope is the successor to the Hubble, and its launch date has been delayed in several times over the years within the latest estimate now for now it was for December 2021. Unlike the Hubble, the telescope would be parked far from Earth and out of reach of repair crews. Its science will look at four major themes. The universe's first light, how the first galaxies were formed, how stars are formed, and looking at the origins of life, including exoplanets. The Hubble t uh, Telescope the Hubble Telescope was launched in 1990. Some of Hubble's major contributions include determining the age of the universe with more precision, finding more moons near Pluto, doing observations of galaxies in the, the young universe, monitoring space weather on the outer planets, and even observing exoplanets, a situation not anticipated for the telescope as the first major exoplanet discoveries didn't happen until the mid-1990s. A flaw in its mirror was fixed with an upgrade from space, the space shuttle crew in 1993. Hubble underwent five servicing missions by shuttle crews, with the last one being in 2009. It remains in good health to this day and is expected to overlap some observations with the James Webb Space Telescope. Wow. The Hubble is part of a set of four great observatories launched by NASA in the 1990s and 2000s. The other members included the Spitzer Space Belt Telescope, the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory, and the Chandra X-ray Observatory, which they have all made many discoveries on their own. The Kepler Telescope. This planet-hunting machine has found more than 4,000 potential planets since first launching in 2009. Initially, it focused on a section of the Cygnus, Cygnus constellation, but in 2013, problems with pointing consistently created a new mission in which Kepler moves between different regions of the sky. One of Kepler's major contributions is finding more super-Earths and rocky planets which are harder to spot near bright stars. The Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, called ALMA. This telescope in Chile has 66 receivers and especially its specialty is looking through the dust in young planetary systems or through dusty stars and galaxies to see how uh, cosmic objects are formed. It was fully operational as of 2013. ALMA is unique in its sensitivity because it has so many receivers available. Some of its results include the clearest ever image of the star Betelgeuse and precise measurements of black hole masses. Arecibo Observatory the observatory began operating since 1963 and is famous for many radio astronomy studies. The Puerto Rican telescope is also known for a message called the Arecibo message that was directed at the globular, cl globular cluster M13 in 1974. The observatory was damaged during a 2017 hurricane that devastated Puerto Rico in popular culture. Arecibo was also the location of the climax of the 1995 James Bond film, GoldenEye, and it appeared in the 1997 movie, Contact. On December 1, 2020, the Arecibo Observatory collapsed due to a structural failure and was deemed too costly to repair. The remaining structure was dismantled. The Carl G. Jansky Very Large Array this is a set of 27 telescopes located in the New Mexico desert. Construction began on the VLA in 1973. Some of the VLA's major discoveries include finding ice on Mercury, 
peering into the dusty center of the Milky Way and looking at the formation of black holes. The telescope array was also predominantly fe prominently featured in the 1997 movie Contact as the site where a purported extraterrestrial signal arrived. The W.M. Keck Observatory The twin telescopes at the W.M. Keck Observatory in Hawaii are the largest optical and infrared telescopes available. The telescopes started their work in 1993 and 1996. Some of their major discoveries, including finding the first exoplanet transitioning across the parent star, its parent star, and learning about star movements in the nearby Andromeda Galaxy. And the Palomar Observatory is located in San Diego County, California, began work in 1949. The telescope is best known for discovering the small worlds Kuar, Cedra, and Eris in the Kuiper Belt, but its work also includes discovering supernovas and tracking asteroids and looking at gamma ray bursts. Well, I found that really interesting about telescopes. I hope you did too. You know, why not check out information about different telescopes and what they're looking at in the sky? In the meantime, please stay safe, be kind to one another, and as always, happy yarning. Bye now.